Hey, and welcome to Talk of Financially. Um, I was talking about actually talking MFT and yeah, basically the whole shebang for the day. Um, we're having a little bit of a weather breakdown here in Ohio. It's uh, it's hailing, I believe, raining hard and windy, and we're on the sixth floor, so it makes for it for entertaining moments. Anyway, so uh, first of all, I want to let you guys know that I'm no longer uh, going to be doing anchor uh, the anchor platform. Um, not sure what happened there, but I started off pretty well. Uh, yeah, it, 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 overall, I don't think that would, that would have worked out of the way. So, uh, I'm doing more the, um, the Calvin Taylor, uh, dot substack.com. I'm also on Odyssey. I'm also on, um, oh, a couple other platforms, BitChute. And um, yeah, anyway, so that's where I'll be at. Uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to visit those platforms and uh, su- show your support, especially with um, with um, with uh, uh, Substack, uh, then you can uh, sign up for the free email uh, uh, um, articles and such. And there, I do both articles, or I do written work as well as video. And this will be going on there as well, as well as. Another uh, piece I'll be uh, adding to it. So you, you pretty much do the two uh, the two foot press on one. I'm gonna try. Be, I'm gonna be trying to do that every time I do it. Uh, so that that way that doesn't take as much room on my, my uh, portfolio there as uh, it would normally. Anyway, um, apparently the the uh, the Fed has reached the one trillion mark on the uh, repo. Uh, Fed reverse repo facility usage jumps to record 1.87 trillion. The amount of cash investors, according to Bloomberg, uh, well, according to Alex Harris of Bloomberg, uh, the amount of cash investors are parking at a major Federal Reserve facility surged about 1 trillion once again amid an overabundance of U.S. dollars. 74 participants on Thursday uh, placed an unprecedented total of 100 and uh, well, not sorry, 1.87 trillion at Federal Reserve's overnight reserve free purchase facility, in which uh, counterparties like money market funds can place cash with the central bank that surpassed the previous all time uh, all time all time high volume of uh, 1.4 trillion from July 30th. Uh, New York Fed data shows. The record is far from unexpected, but it does once again bring into focus growing imbalance in front and markets that have helped uh, keep downward pressure on short end, uh, short end rates. Market observers are betting that this is popular, that this that its popularity will likely increase further as the treasury pays down its big supply while unwinding its cash pile to avoid breaching the debt ceiling. Yeah, that's coming up here pretty soon, too, actually. Anyway, I wanted to, I just want to get to it now. <laughs> okay, so let me see. Okay, now this is being a little itch. I'm sorry, guys, hold on. <sighs> okay, I was on it. <laughs> I was on it uh, at Bestopia trying to. Okay, why is this not working now? Hold on, not going. Okay, now that... Hold on, guys. Sorry, guys. I was um, trying to figure out how to put this page back up, as you can see. I was able to uh, um, put it back up, but anyway. I wanted to uh, kind of remind a little bit of what repurchasing agreements are. That's basically what they're doing. Uh, a reverse repurchase agreement or reverse repo is a purchase of securities with the agreement to sell them at a higher price at a specific future date for the party selling the security and agreeing to repurchase it in the future. It is a repurchase agreement or RP. 
uh, or repo for the party on the other end of the transaction buying the security and agreeing to sell in the future. It is a reverse repurchase agreement or reverse repo. Repos are classified as a money market instrument and they are usually used to raise short-term capital. However, reverse repurchase agreements work, uh, oh, how, sorry. Uh, reverse repurchase agreements, RRPs, are the buyer and a purchase agreement. These financial instruments are also called collateralized loans, buy and sell back loans, and sell buy back loans. Uh, reverse repos uh, are commonly used by businesses like lending institutions or investors to lend short-term capital to other businesses during cash flow uh, issues. In a sense, the lender buys a business asset equipped or even shares in the seller's company and at a, uh, at a set value, uh, uh, sorry, set future time, sells the asset back for a higher price the higher price represents the interest to the buyer, but uh, for loaning money to the seller during the duration of the deal. The asset acquired by the buyer acts as collateral against any default risk it faces from the seller. Short-term RRPs hold smaller collateral risk than long-term RRPs as over the long-term uh, asset held as collateral can often depreciate in value, causing collateral risk for the RRP buyer. In a micro example of RRPs, the Federal Reserve Bank or Fed uses repos and RRPs in order to provide stability in lending markets through open market operations. So it's not, it's not sitting there printing the freaking money. Is, is purchasing assets, then, then uh, reselling them to the same place, but with a little bit of extra um, interest to it, it seems like. Anyway, uh, in order to provide stability in lending markets through open market operations, or OMO, uh, the RRP transaction is used less often than a repo by the, re by, by the Fed. As a repo puts money into the bank banking system, uh, when it's when it's short, whereas an RRP borrows money from the system when there is too much liquidity, the Fed conducts RRPs in order to maintain long-term monetary policy and ensure capital liquidity uh, levels in the market. The takeaways: a reverse repo is a short-term agreement to purchase securities in order to sell them back at a slightly higher price. Repos and reverse repos are usually for short-term borrowing and lending often overnight. Central banks use re uh, reverse repos to add money to the money supply via open market operations. Tri-party uh, tri RRPs, uh, the, uh, party, uh, the part of the business of repos and RRPs is growing as third-party collateral management operators are providing services to develop RRPs on behalf of investors and provide quick funding to businesses to, in need. As quality collateral is sometimes difficult to find, businesses are taking advantage of these assets as a quality way to find expansion and equipment acquisitions through the use of tripartite repos, resulting in RRP opportunities for investors. This session, this section of the industry is known as collateral management optimization and efficiency. Uh, components of an RRP are, are uh, differ, uh, an RRP differs from buy and sell backs in a simple yet clear way. Buy and sell backs agreements legally document each transaction separately, providing clear separation each transaction. In this way, and uh, each transaction can legally stand on its own without the enforcement of the other. RRPs, on the other hand, have each phase, uh, phase of the agree uh, agreement legally documented within the same contract and ensure 
the availability and right to each phase of the agreement. Lastly, in an RP, although collateral is in a sense uh, uh, in a sense purchased, generally the collateral never changes physical location or actual ownership. If the seller defaults against the buyer, the collateral would need to be physically transferred. So in other words, it's basically like if you're um, going to a pawn shop and pawning something off. Uh, the one difference is uh, when you buy it, you may buy it uh, slightly more and that sort of thing, except you're not keeping both <laughs> as far as the part goes. Anyway, see, uh, okay. Okay. Ba -ba -ba. Okay. Anyway, that, that was as far as that part goes. But let's see if I can bring, try to bring it back down. Oh, there we go. Uh, oh. There's been a lot of talk in the past of owing China money and this and that. I wanted to kind of like because the the uh, the word reserves and foreign currency reserves has has come up in terms of uh, borrowing and stuff of that nature. I wanted to kind of, I wanted to do my best to clear that up because I don't I don't know any other way of of um, communicating this with people who may, who may listen to the news far too much or listen to those headliners on the CNBCs, the, the Fox, the Fox business, the Bloombergs and, and such. Uh, the speculators that literally get paid to speculate about what may or may not happen. Um, yeah, some of them actually may be totally right, but the rest are totally wrong and they get paid to be wrong, basically. Anyway, so let me can get this up here. And will this actually show? I don't know, but it will actually tell you what it is, I think. Is this it? Uh, right. Uh, what are foreign exchange reserves? Uh, foreign exchange reserves are, are assets held on reserve by a central bank and foreign currencies. These reserves are used to back liabilities and influence a monetary policy. It includes any foreign money held by a central bank, such as the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank. So part of the takeaway, the foreign exchange reserves are assets denominated in foreign currency that are held by a central bank. These may include foreign currencies, bonds, treasury bills, and other government uh, securities. Most foreign exchange res uh, uh, reserves are held in U.S. dollars, with China being the largest foreign currency reserve holder in the world. Uh, economists suggest that it's best to hold foreign exchange service reserves in the currency that is not directly connected to the country's own currency. How foreign currency, uh, wait a minute, uh, how foreign exchange reserves work. Foreign exchange reserves can include uh, banknotes, deposits, uh, bonds, treasury bills, and other government securities. These assets serve many purposes, but are most significantly held to ensure that a central government agency has backup funds if there are national, uh, national currency rapid devalues or becomes altogether insolvent. It is common practice in the countries around the world for their central bank to hold a significant amount of reserves in their foreign exchange. Most of these reserves are held in the U.S. dollar since it is the most traded currency and the world. It is not uncommon for the foreign currency exchange rate, uh, reserves to be made up of the British pound, the euro, the Chinese uh, yuan, I say yuan, but sorry, I, I don't know how to pronounce that very, very well, or the Chinese yen uh, as well. Economists theorize that it is better to hold the foreign exchange reserves in a currency that is not directly connected to the country's own currency in order to provide a barrier should there be a market shock. However, this practice has become more difficult as currencies have become more intertwined as global trading has become easier. Examples of foreign exchange reserves. The world's largest current uh, foreign exchange reserve holds, holder is China, a country holding more than three trillion of, it, of its assets in a foreign currency. Most of their reserves are held in the US dollar. One of the reasons for this is that it makes international trading easier to execute since most of the trading takes place using the U.S. dollar. 
Uh, Saudi Arabia hold, also holds considerable foreign exchange reserves as the country relies mainly on the export of its vast oil reserves. If oil prices begin to rapidly drop, their economy could suffer. They keep large amounts of foreign funds in reserves to act as a cushion should this happen if, it, if it's only a temporary fix. So uh, fast fact, U.S. foreign exchange reserves totaling $129 billion as of January 2020 compared to China's $3.1 trillion. So that means that it seems like that means that our money is worth more than theirs, but who knows? Um, maybe I got that math wrong. Never been very good at math. Anyway, Russians, uh, Russia foreign exchange reserves are held mostly in U.S. dollars much like the rest of the world, but the country also keeps some of its reserves in gold since gold is a commodity with an underlying value. The risk in relying on gold in the event of a Russian uh, economic decline is that the value of gold will not be significant enough to support the country's needs. Another danger of using gold as a reserve is that the asset is all, is only worth what someone also is willing to pay for it during the economic crash that would put the power of determining the value of the gold reserve and therefore Russia's financial ba- fallback into the hands of the ent- ent- um, entity willing to purchase it. Uh, okay. Wanted to get that out of the way. Let's see. I should be able to find uh, this. Wait, I just fuck up. Uh, let's see. I may just fuck up here. Let me see something here. Okay. This is, let me see. Okay, no. Uh, that's, okay. Maybe this will actually have what I want on it. There we go. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so foreign exchange. This is what it looks like in regards to countries and what they have, and you know, uh, in foreign reserves. China being number one, as uh, I just mentioned, as far as the part goes, having three hundred thirty uh, three billion three hundred no three trillion three hundred seventy one billion or some type of fact in U.S. dollars, uh, which is up twenty five seven eleven. So. We're not borrowing from anybody. They, we all, every country has a foreign currency reserve. For uh, for people to say that we are borrowing from someone, that means that we should have been bankrupt forty years ago, or no, I'm sorry, since uh, the '90s. So about almost thirty years ago, we should have been totally bankrupt, no money. Uh, no food, nothing of that nature. We don't have that because we are a sovereign currency. And it's not just because we can actually, um, it's not just because we can print money, which that is a function of the Fed, uh, but it also means that it's because we are the world's currency, which means we trade with everybody. And everybody has mainly our currency as reserve backup in case some shit happens with their currency or, you know, say the, the trading part they have and their trading partner needs need some currency. They could then, that's why so many uh, different uh, countries are pegged to our dollar. You have Argentina, you have Cuba at one point, I think they still are maybe, um, Venezuela definitely. You know, they peg their currency to ours because ours is so valuable on the open market, as, as I just told you, as far as that part goes. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, now, again, this is. Uh, Foreign exchange reserves in U.S. dollars. China being number one, Japan number two. Let's see how many of these countries actually have our currency in their foreign reserves. So far, I'm seeing about, ooh, let me just go all the way down. Oops. Uh, there's 194 countries with our money in reserves to a certain degree. Apparently, uh, is it Kiribati? Kiribati uh, has like seven. So okay, but still, that's the whole world has literally our money as a reserve currency. So for those who want to sit there and say we borrow money from China, President Obama, uh, Bush, um, let's see, Ted Cruz has said this, Paul Ryan, 
pretty much everybody that is a centrist, Democrat, or Republican, do me a favor. Shut the hell up. Uh, you're doing talking points and you're trying to like get like whatever the hell it is you're getting, like basically like make sure people are not in that same club of sorts. Um, anyway, so let's see. This is the trade, uh, 2021 U.S. trade in goods with China. Exports, I'm thinking that's what we sell. Um, this is, uh, let's see, so 12102 is what we have sold. Uh, but since we are a consumer uh, and uh, they do hold our currency as, as their uh, main reserve or foreign currency reserve, they own, they have purchased about 90 with the 39. Sorry, hold on. That's actually total is, as you can see, uh, 229 billion or something to that effect, 635. Yeah, okay. And so we we uh, mainly uh, do business with them, obviously, it looks like. But we do business with other countries, obviously, also. Anyway, so let's see what else. Uh, this is, I guess, uh, the Fed's general fund here. Yeah, what the hell do you want to see? It's up to you. But I guess let's see. Fund balance with Treasury, 101,000. Yeah, we have the debt slate coming up as well. That's a self-imposed BS right there, which didn't happen in the first place. Uh, we don't even need to sell bonds. Uh, that is to give someone a little extra interest. That's all it is as far as I forgot. Let's say high interest reserve account uh, is what Warren Moser, who is one of the founding fathers of monetary theory. Um, and I wanted to, I, oh, what? Let's see this. This is the new place I have. Uh, I'm on Rumble, which quite frankly, quite frankly, seems uh, very much right wing. Which fine, whatever. Um, they allow me to have my shit up here. That's what I care about as well. But anyway, let's see. Now this is my this is my stuff. Uh, talking MMT financially, I put it up here. I also put it um, up here. And as you can see, I the Fed, the Fed came out with a uh, with an answer uh, to someone's question: is if you can, if we can all like have a reserve, uh, uh, if we can all have like big accounts and all that up at the Fed. The Fed said no. The Federal Reserve Bank provides financial services to banks and government entities only. Individuals cannot, by law, have accounts at the Fed and Federal Reserve. But yeah, anyway, um, I have step up here as well as you can see and okay so still at 50 right on let's see where oh, uh, let's see, there we go and this is my um uh Taylor dot sub stack uh let's see that's what it looks like overall if you're interested just go to as you can see um Calvin Taylor dot substack dot com and sign up for a free email for a free email list and you can get pretty much this and other things on nature. Anyway, let's see what else. Uh yeah, that's pretty much all I got in regards to that. Let me see. Um I think I've already talked about this. Yeah. Okay, anything else uh, I can probably say uh, or show, really? Hmm. Well, I hope you guys are having a good Friday, the 13th. I love the fact it's Friday the 13th. I hope you guys aren't having too, ma too much of a bad um, uh, bad uh, day in regards to just the, the thinking behind it. And apparently, this is the uh, Reserve uh, the Federal Reserve dot gov. Let's see, as you can see, there's the, um, and then I guess it's August 11th uh, of last year to this. So, Federal Reserve Credit, uh, 8204 942, security held outright, 767796, and so on and so forth. Loans at 8332. 
Uh, somebody was was trying to tell me to uh, on these things to try and get to the point. I was trying to say that these would use, used to uh, last me about an hour and a half, give or take. Because I would be reading out constant articles. Uh, in this case, I'm trying to leave it to point blank and that sort of thing. Um, let's see, is there was there anything else I wanted to do? Let's see, forex. Uh, okay, let's go see why foreign exchange reserves are important. Might be something to uh, end on. Foreign exchange reserves are foreign reserves uh, refers to the foreign currency held by a central bank, uh, by the central bank or other country's monetary authority. It can be used for, uh, it can be in the form of cash or assets that can be liquidated. There are numerous reasons why maintaining a good foreign exchange reserve is important. The most crucial is safeguarding the local currency's value. We are part of the global e uh, economy where trade is made beyond boundaries. A country's foreign exchange reserves depend on its total imports and exports. A local export is paid by its trading partner in USD, uh, can, uh, CAD, euros, or any other currency. The trader deposits this foreign currency into his local bank, and ex in an exchange, he receives local currency, which he can use for his day-to-day -day transactions. The local bank then transfers the foreign currency to the central bank. And similarly, when a country imports any commodity, it has to pay the other country or a foreign trader in their respective currency. This leads to a decline in foreign exchange reserves, thus to accumulate foreign exchange reserves. A country needs to increase its exports and decrease its imports. Why are foreign exchange reserves important? Foreign exchange reserves are important for every national be, uh, nation excuse me, because they include bonds, deposits, banknotes, treasury bills, gold, and other government securities and can, and can ensure that the central government agency has backup funds to support the national currency if it devalues at some point. The importance of foreign exchange reserves for developing countries is based on the security of how secu uh, currency positions uh, economic growth boost, maintain liquidity in economic crisis, uh, attract foreign investments, fund infrastructure projects, etc. Foreign exchange reserves can include bank notes, deposits, bonds, treasury bills, and other government securities. These assets serve many purposes, but are most, most significantly held to ensure that a central government can't a central government agency has backup funds if their if their if their national currency rapidly devalues or becomes altogether insolvent. Maintaining a foreign exchange reserve is important for every nation, whether developing or uh, developed. Uh, every country makes calculated moves to ensure that its foreign reserves. Never see a fall. There are seven reasons why these reserves are important. The first one is foreign exchange reserves can secure the, posi the position of home currency. One of the most uh, advantage advantageous, excuse me, there we go, uh, position that a country will co uh, consider uh, with considerable foreign exchange reserves enjoys is, uh, it, it enjoys is its currency security. Yeah. Um, these reserves maintain the value of the home currency at a fixed rate. Um, it safeguards the home currency against devaluation. It also promotes sales. For example, China pegs the value of their uh, yuan against the USD. By stockpiling USD, it raises the dollar's value compared to the yuan. Uh, increasing their sales as Chinese exports should become cheaper than American-made goods. Foreign uh, exchange rates can boost economic growth. Some countries with a floating exchange rate use foreign exchange reserves to keep their currency lower than USD. 
For example, Japan, with its floating currency, the yen, buys U.S. treasury to keep its yen's value lower, uh, lower the, than USD. This encourages exports that leads to economic growth. Foreign exchange res uh, reserves can maintain liquidity in economic crisis. Maintaining a foreign exchange reserve allows a country to import necess necessary commodities, otherwise not getting purchased uh, locally due to crises like a volcanic eruption or a flood. In such cases, the central bank aids the local exporter by liquidating its foreign reserve. The bank exchanges foreign currency to the local currency, enabling domestic exports to import important items. Similar situations like wars, military coups, or political instability can make foreign investors apprehensive about investing in an unsta unstable country. This can promote them to withdraw their deposits from the country's bank, creating a foreign currency shortage. This can lead to inflation as imp imports will become expensive. If a country was uh, if a country has enough foreign currency, such as, such situations can be avoided. Foreign exchange reserves can attract foreign investment. Uh, money brings the this statement holds when we are talking about foreign uh, exchange rate, uh, reserves. Every country needs foreign investment for economic um, growth. To provide confidence to foreign investors, the central bank uses foreign reserves as leverage. It, assu it assures the investors that their investment will be protected. Foreign exchange reserves can meet external obligations. Uh, the importance of foreign exchange reserves for developing countries is uh, incalculable. For this point is crucial, Count countries require foreign currency to settle international payments, including sovereign and commercial debts. Developing countries depend on financing and, lo uh, financing and loans from international monetary authorities. If these countries don't have enough foreign ba balance, it can reduce their borrowing powers. Foreign exchange re reserves can fund infrastructure development. The importance of foreign reserves is not limited to the financial interaction with foreign countries. Various countries use the reserves to fund the infrastructure sector as well. For example, China recapitalized some of its state-owned banks using its reserves. Foreign exchange rates, uh, sorry, foreign exchange reserves can boost returns. To boost returns without compromising safety, many countries hold various uh, interest-bearing investment. This can be in gold, treasury bonds, or other assets that can be liquidated easier, easily. Key points of foreign exchange reserves. These can be stocked in the form of uh, banknotes, Treasury bills, bonds, deposits, and other government securities. These work as emergency, as emergency funds for a country in uncertainties like floods, volcano eruptions, wars, etc. The USD, the global currency, is the most preferred currency of foreign exchange reserves. China is the leading is is leader in holding the highest foreign reserves in USD. These are required to maintain the local currency's value, maintain competitive prices, ex imports, and assure foreign investors. These are required to maintain the borrowing power of a country and, and to uh, settle international debts. What are the uh, guidelines? Ideally, a country must have enough foreign exchange reserves to support three to six months of importing essential commodities like food, it should have a reserve a surplus to settle its double its debt double as debt payments and current account deficit of 12 months in 2015 when Greece faced economic crisis it used its reserves with the IMF to repay the European Central Bank countries and foreign exchange reserves countries with large trade surpluses on the top of this list since their exports are higher than their imports they end up stockpiling dollars. As of, 30, uh, as of December 31st, 2017, several countries have foreign exchange reserves more than 100 billion. 
with China being the leading country with a reserve of three, uh, three, two, three, six billion. Its major exports is consumer goods and parts. It is followed by Japan that has reserves of one, one, 1,264 billion, following exports of auto parts and consumer products. Saudi Arabia made, made it to the list by being an export of oil. By exporting manufactured goods and chemicals, the United Kingdom has a reserve of 150.8 billion. The United States, too, exports manufactured goods and chemicals and has foreign exchange reserves worth 123.3 billion. Other countries on this list are European Union, uh, Union Switzerland, Taiwan, Russia, Hong Kong, India, South Korea, Brazil, S Singapore, Thailand, Germany, Mexico, France, uh, Italy, Czech Republic, Indonesia, Iran, Poland, Israel, uh, Turkey, and Malaysia. To make a very long story short, uh, it would make no sense to borrow from China since we give them money anyway. So uh, anybody who spouts that out is plainly lying and doesn't want to tell you the truth that we are a sovereign currency, and we are the world reserve um, currency. And for us to be borrowing our own money is, I mean, what that means is we are buying back uh, treasuries, which is rep which is repos, which means that they get a little bit of extra money anyway. Um, and the overnight interest rates are basically just another way of paying interest on the repos. So, again, how can you be borrowing your own money when you make your own money at home? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's all trading. It's all uh, transactions that you buy products or, um, or they borrow to make sure that they have enough foreign exchange reserves to pay for other uh, trade that they may be doing. Um, anyway, so... Anybody out there who still believes that the U.S. is heading for trouble, you really need to learn. Uh, hashtag learn MMT. Um, and to anybody who is doubtful of it, just look up what modern monetary theory is. Look up what functional financing is. Look up what char uh, charterism is. Look up that sort of thing. And also, while you're at it, look up uh, who uh, Warren Moser is, Stephanie Kelton. By both their books, um, I believe that uh, Warren Moser has um, a soft currency book out. Uh, but actually, I, that you can get for, uh, his book can get for, get for free on. I believe it's Warren uh, or Moser Economics uh, com. I want to say uh, you can purchase uh, somebody Kelton's The Depths and Myth at any local bookstore, uh, or you can uh, trans uh, subscribe to her. Uh, to her Substack, I believe it's called The Lens. I'm not sure how much, uh, I'm sure it's free overall, but I'm not sure if there's like an extra thing to it, but anyway. Uh, and if you want to learn more about my perspective on MMT and where, what I think is going to happen as far as the upcoming economic situation, for one, I think that as long as the interest rates stay low, uh, that will help keep the overall um, prices down uh, because a lot of the prices that have gone up are due to foreign uh, um, stuff that's happened uh, in other countries like uh, imports basically not due to money but because of transportation um, because of uh, resources there that's why so many of those jobs that went overseas in the 90s need to come back but they need to come back uh, in a more of a upgraded way in regards to like um, like uh, mechanic or not mechanics, I'm sorry, uh, like uh, manufacturing and producing uh, goods and more of those same goods and services that went overseas. Uh, those need to come back, and we could do we we can find other ways of doing it, but why not bring back jobs anyway? Anywho, um, and there was someone on um, another platform that I showed you earlier, I forgot, the, forgot what it was again now, um, that claimed that, that uh, the infrastructure bill that Biden is trying to, uh, or is partially passed, uh, is part of the Green New Deal. Uh, my first thought is, he never said it wasn't the Green New Deal. 
Uh, he just put uh, his infrastructure bill and a grain deal together. Uh, he, the other thing he said that he would veto would be Medicare for all. And I mean, the one thing he's trying to do is actually try and make um, uh, imp import medications cheaper. Uh, that was one of the biggest uh, things about Medicare for all was insulin that came from Canada was cheaper, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and they're trying to, uh, they're trying to um, expand Medicare. They're trying to expand Medicaid. Uh, the only states that are trying to keep that from happening are Republican states. Because a lot of those same uh, states are the home states of those pharmaceutical industry uh, companies. We have them here as far as uh, you know, healthcare and other uh, pharmaceutical places. Anyway, um, I hope you guys have a good weekend. Uh, please subscribe to this uh, Substack. Please subscribe to this channel, whichever platform that you see it on, because I will put on three different platforms, BitChute and another one. Uh, let me go to that one again to kind of make sure what it is. Rumble. Now, BitChute and Rumble, I understand are more right-wing. I really could care less uh, because YouTube has decided to do a lot of creative um, censoring. Uh, they have a, they have disallowed my videos from being viewed to a certain degree. Uh, it doesn't help the fact that I changed my name a couple of times, but still, it's under the same name overall. Anyway, but it'll be on here. It will be on here, and it will be on here for the most part. Anyway, uh, thanks for uh, watching. Thanks for listening, and. Um, I hope you guys have a good weekend. Uh, subscribe. Um, yeah, subscribe to every channel that, that you see my, see my stuff on. Donate where you can. Comment wh where you want. Um, you can keep it civil. You can, you can not keep it civil. I really don't care. Either way, comment, uh, like, subscribe, uh, and sign up for, for this free mailing list on, um, on Substack. Thank you and peace out for now. Good weekend.